Hello, vinyl lovers. Welcome to another episode of Groovescape. I'm Josh Greenberg. Imagine it's 1972, and David Bowie is forming a supergroup with Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath and Mark Bolin of T-Rex. They manage to recruit John Lennon, who by now is up for a new musical challenge. It's his distinct voice they need. Bright, sharp, a bit nasally. Certainly not technically strong, but unique and totally wonderful. Uh, loading up Bowie's tricked-out DeLorean, they set the clock for 1998, Engage the flux capacitor and they're off in search of a guitarist with a gritty garage rock orientation and a lo-fi aesthetic. They arrive on Jack White's doorstep in Detroit. Jack grabs his bag and he grabs his guitar and he jumps into the back seat. Pedal to the metal, the group head west to Palm Desert, California, where they drop in on Josh Hama and tell him how fucking great that debut Queens of the Stone Age album is. They want Hame's energy and they love the way he bridges punk heavy metal and classic rock and roll. Now what would that sound like? A super group including Bowie, uh, Iomi, Bolin, Lennon, White, and Hame. It's going to sound fuzzy, raw, and gnarly. It's going to have lots of distortion. It's going to be heavy on some tracks and sensitive, almost gentle on others. It'll be emotional. Your reaction to the music will be physical, visceral. You'll feel it in your gut. You'll feel it in your heart and you'll hear it in your head. It's going to sound an awful lot like Ty Siegel. Now, Ty Siegel is one of the most creative and productive musicians of our time, having released at least one album every year since his debut LP dropped in 2008, and as many as three per year when you combine solos with covers and collaborations. Now, in addition to the numerous full-length LPs, there's a box set of demos, loads of singles and EPs, live albums, and more. Uh, most of it's been released on vinyl, uh, some as digital downloads only. A Siegel is in many respects the embodiment of the, of the musician for the social media age. Although he seems to avoid any serious presence on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and other common promotional media platforms, his music arrives and then seems to vanish almost immediately as a new single, EP, or split album takes its place. While it's tough to keep up, you don't ever forget Ty Siegel because he always has something new to offer. Another album, a 7-inch, or a record on which he'll trade his guitar for a drum kit, playing a backup role to a collaborator or a friend on their new album. Ty Siegel was born in 1987 in Laguna Beach, California. His mom was an artist and his dad a lawyer. As a teenager, he attended the same high school as many of the kids who would later become cast members of the MTV series Laguna Beach, the real Orange County, which would then spin off into the wildly popular show, The Hills. The old school hippie vibe that defined the Laguna Beach where Siegel grew up surfing, uh, drinking too much, and getting into all manner of normal teenage trouble suddenly found itself transformed into a yuppie's paradise, packaged plastic and inauthentic. So he left Laguna Beach for the Bay Area where he attended the University of San Francisco, where as he describes it, he reluctantly completed a degree in media studies. Now, according to one interview I read, he described his college years as kind of a broker deal with his parents. Go to university, get a, a degree, and then go and do whatever the fuck you want with your life. Now, during those high school and university days, Siegel uh, started or joined numerous bands. Uh, one of these bands, Epsilons, was a lo-fi punk rock outfit whose early demos were recorded with walkie-talkies and headphones serving as mics. Now this track is called Teeny Boppers uh, and was released on the 2006 album called Killed em Deader in a Six Card Poker Hand uh, and was released on the Retard Disco label.
So that is Teeny Boppers, a uh, very early Ty Siegel with his former band Epsilons. Now the video for that song, which you can stream on YouTube, is absolutely hilarious. Uh, it's in one part rock music video, another part reality television, a spoof on the MTV culture that Siegel felt ruined authentic Laguna Beach. Now as both a collector and a fan, it's hard to keep up with Siegel because he always seems to be releasing new music. Now this makes for an exciting, uh, if not daunting, and expensive habit. Uh, his musical influences draw broadly from the traditions of punk, glam rock, surf, folk, and psychedelia. It's almost impossible to pin him down to any one genre because of how liberally he borrows musical elements and ideas from across time and space, and how each album expresses both a common sound you immediately recognize it as a Ty Siegel record while demonstrating the ways in which he continues to push his songwriting and compositions in new directions. Some artists have a very specific aesthetic and sound, uh, and they build a career out of mining that vibe. Others value the risk of throwing it all out the window every now and again and experimenting with new instruments, new sounds, and new arrangements, of operating outside their normal comfort zone. If you listen to Siegel's music as a whole, and even listening to all the songs on a single record, you get the sense that this is an artist who's not content with doing the same thing album after album. As he explained in a 2018 interview, I feel like the guitar-based song, uh, the guitar-based songwriting, rock songwriting, it's too comfortable now, so I don't want to go there anymore. I don't know what that means for the future. Sometimes you just got to throw all your old ideas out the window and do something new. Now, Siegel's ability to always be doing something new is no doubt shaped by uh, his work ethic. <clears throat> he describes uh, being a musician as a full-time job. Uh, he has to work on it every single day. Uh, but of course, it's also shaped by his skills as a multi-instrumentalist. He plays guitar, bass, synth, piano, uh, and drums. And the fact that he also works as a sound engineer, producing music for other artists, along with his penchant for collaboration, no doubt acts as an important motivator or fuel for his own creative ideas and needs. So if you listen to Siegel's albums closely, you're going to hear traces of all kinds of influences. Neil Young, Kiss, Black Flag, the surf guitar of Dick Dale, the Kinks, the Stooges, early Grateful Dead, and of course that list of crucial influences I mentioned off the top. The stoner rock of Black Sabbath, uh, the raspy sound of John Lennon's voice, the glam stylings of the Ziggy era David Bowie and T-Rex. Now while he dispenses with the glitter and makeup, his reverence for Bowen's, or Bolin's melodies in particular is clear. <clears throat> Siegel's T-Rex cover album, cleverly titled Tyrex, is just amazing and I'll get to that soon. Now some of those artists that I've just mentioned were clearly influential in shaping Siegel's sound and had an almost primeval presence, while others were more enigmatic. And Siegel seems to move between these ends of the rock personality spectrum, which is what makes his music so endearing uh, and so capable of catching you by surprise. As a rock critic once wrote, while much of Siegel's music is visceral, loud, fast, and a little bit in your face, he continues to also work on his mysterious side, uh, creating music that's soft, catchy, and cerebral. Now, to be sure, Siegel is a revivalist, but he's not a throwback artist by any stretch. Perhaps as Tarantino is to filmmaking, Siegel borrows his influences, but mixes and reimagines, reimagines them in clever, sometimes chaotic new ways that makes for a wholly new sonic experience. Now, with all that set up, let's turn to the albums and sounds. And I tell you, with such a vast discography, this, it's difficult and probably impossible to capture the fullness or depth of Siegel's music in a single episode. But the goal here isn't to provide a complete overview of his work, uh, but an introduction, uh, an introduction for the uninitiated. I hope with this podcast in general is to turn you on to new artists so you'll go straight to your local record store and buy a new album for your collection, or at least pay to download that artist's music from your preferred streaming platform if that's how you roll. At the risk of doing this all wrong, I'm going to focus on offering a sample of songs from some important albums that I think capture the range of sounds and highlights of Ty Siegel's oeuvre. I've selected solo albums from his early and later years, 
uh, one of his collaborative LPs in both a cover and a live album. Now, I already know there's a ton of great music that I'm going to miss, but c'est la vie. Uh, this episode can't go on forever and cover everything, but I hope you'll get the gist of what Ty Siegel is all about and why I find his music so refreshing uh, and enjoyable to listen to. A Siegel's debut solo album was self-titled uh, and released in 2008 on Castle Face Records. Uh, this is the label owned by John Dwyer, uh, who fronts the fantastic San Francisco-based band uh, The O.C.'s. Now, at the time, Siegel was drumming in a band called The Traditional Fools. Uh, his arm broken, the Siegel played nevertheless with the drumstick fastened inside of his cast. Now, O'Dwyer was a fixture and key influencer in the San Francisco musical scene, uh, and they already and was already well known to Siegel at the time. Uh, Kindred Spirits, uh, they hit it off almost immediately. And coming in at a sprightly 24 minutes, Siegel's eponymous album captures the range of his influences at the time. The music is restless, it's raw and a little unrestrained. A response to the album was generally positive, uh, with reviews citing Siegel's vigorously nostalgic riffs and rowdy energy. Uh, the album has a few great tracks, uh, among them The Drag, Watching You, and a fun cover of the Ramones song, You Should Never Have Opened That Door. After the release of his debut, Siegel switched labels from Castle Face to Goner Records for his next two albums, uh, the first which was Lemons, uh, released in 2009. Uh, it was a great album. Um, and uh, the second uh, Goner Records LP, uh, released a year later in 2010, uh, one of my favorite Siegel albums uh, is Melted. Uh, and this features an unforgettably diverse mix of weird, off-kilter, uh, vintage sounding psych pop songs. Now production wise, Melted is a more polished sounding record uh, than both his debut uh, and sophomore LPs which came before it. And to get him there, T Siegel enlisted uh, the support of Bay Area sound engineer Eric Bauer uh, and a group of terrific backup artists, many of which he continues to work with to this day. Uh, Melted has three amazing opening tracks, uh, starting off with Finger, to Caesar and Girlfriend, all of them capturing Siegel's affinity for combining catchy, melod cap catchy melodies uh, with weird and distorted musical flourishes that have really become signatures of his sound. Uh, here's a sample, though, of one of my favorite songs from the album. It's called Imaginary Person, which has a real kind of lo-fi surf rock feel. It almost sounds like it could have been a demo for a much slicker sounding Beck song of the same era.
Oh, it's such a cool tune. Uh, that is Imaginary Person by Ty Siegel, off his third album, Melted, released under the Goner Records label in 2010. Now, in 2011, Siegel signed with Drag City Records, an independent label out of Chicago, Illinois, uh, which also has the rights to Silver Jews, a Stereo Lab, Pavement Wand, and many other great bands. Now, Siegel would release the critically acclaimed Goodbye Bread LP uh, in 2011, uh, which Pitchfork magazine described as a songwriter's album, uh, defined by slower tempos and cleaner sounds. Uh, his voice on this record is more elegant, uh, the music is warmer, the songs have a fuller and kind of brighter feel to them. Uh, overall, it's just a more detailed album uh, that puts Siegel's instrumental skills on fuller display. You have a look at the liner notes and we see uh, he plays almost every instrument on that album. Uh, and it's really a wonderful record, one that, for me anyway, represents an important inflection point in his discography, a Verge album, if you will. Uh, and it's an absolute favorite in my large and always growing Siegel collection. <coughs> uh, the opening track, uh, which is the song, uh, the title song on the album, uh, is a beautiful, uh, patiently sung ballad that very clearly signals the Bolan-esque influence of Siegel's songwriting. This is Goodbye Bread. song i'm gonna say that a lot in this episode uh and would love to play the whole track but uh you know time is of the essence uh so that was uh goodbye bread the title track off of ty siegel's 2011 album uh by the same name uh showed you some of the album artwork uh siegel of course loves dogs uh talks about his dogs writes about his dogs and sings about his dogs uh, all the time as a dog lover uh i think that's awesome uh, anyway, uh, over the next few years, uh, Siegel would release several more LPs. Uh, Twins and then Hair, uh, the latter with White Fence's Tim Presley, would come in 2012. Uh, in 2013, following the death of his father, with whom he was very close, uh, Siegel released an acoustic album uh, called Sleeper, uh, which he would describe as a kind of emotional purge. This was a really difficult personal time in his life, uh, and the album really kind of captures uh, a lot of the sound and the feel and the emotion of that period for him. Uh, if his early music was more visceral, heavy, fast, uh, and in your face, uh, Sleeper is perhaps the more enigmatic album uh, that, relieves, uh, that reveals rather the softer side to his songwriting personality. Now, there aren't any banger tracks on this one. Uh, no obvious singles. It's just a very solid, atmospheric album uh, that captures an important moment in the life of an artist. Uh, the opening song, uh, the title track, Sleeper, has a real kind of Neil Young resonance and aesthetic. You can feel the pain uh, and the heartache in the music. It's an incredibly moving song, uh, and I'm going to play that for you now. This is Sleeper. Uh, this is the title track off of uh, Siegel's 2013 album of the same name. Yeah. 
So that is uh, Sleeper, the title track of Ty Siegel's 2013 album, Sleeper. Now in 2014, Siegel released one of his strongest and most complete records to date, uh, Manipulator, which is a double album uh, with an incredible lineup of singles. You've got Tall Man, Skinny Lady, uh, The Singer, The Faker, and Feel, uh, which is the song I used in the intro to this episode. Uh, all of them are great songs. The whole album is fantastic. Uh, a Guardian review accurately described this album uh, as having been an extraordinarily sequenced LP. Uh, each song on Manipulator carries almost seamlessly into the next. There isn't the same genre hopping that defines some of his earlier releases. Now, as been referenced already, one of Siegel's biggest influences is the UK glam rock band T-Rex. Uh, and the artist who fronted T-Rex, in particular, Mark Bolin. On 2015's Tyrex, which I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, uh, this is a full-length cover album uh, that combines uh, an earlier EP and then a bunch of singles that would come later, uh, all recomposed and uh, assembled onto a full-length LP. Uh, here, Siegel pays tribute to one of the most important artists, of the late 60s and 1970s, and he gives the songs on this album a real fuzzy, uh, lengthier, and more heavily distorted makeover that perhaps makes the song sound more like Ty Siegel originals than covers. Now, perhaps what I like most about this album is the song selection. Uh, Siegel kind of takes a pass on what would probably be the most recognizable T-Rex tracks. Songs like Jeepster, uh, Get It On, Bang A Gong, A Cosmic Dancer, which I love to hear him cover those songs but he takes a pass on those in favor of a collection of deeper tracks uh, woodland rock uh, elemental child and what for me is the strongest song on the album uh, this is an absolutely menacing cover of buick mccain <laughs> So that is Ty Siegel's 2015 cover of Buick McCain, uh, originally recorded in 1972 uh, by T-Rex on the album The Slider. Now Siegel's output would really take off in the next few years uh, with several incredible albums, uh, solos, more covers and collaborative efforts all to come. Uh, in 2016, he released the amazing album Emotional Mugger. Uh, and in 2017, he released Oddly, perhaps, another self-titled album. Uh, this one, of course, also called uh, Ty Siegel. Uh, also, really, really great album. Uh, and in 2018 came three incredible new LPs. Uh, Freedom's Goblin, uh, which is a double album uh, with the Freedom Band, uh, his new backing outfit. Uh, this is uh, Freedom's Goblin, which is one of my favorite uh, in the Siegel uh, discography. Uh, he released, so he released that album, uh, he released Fudge Sandwich, which is a uh, compilation of cover songs, um, songs by a wide range of artists, uh, the Ramones, uh, Funkadelic, uh, Spencer Davis Group, uh, Grateful Dead, uh, and many others. I actually talk about that album in episode two of uh, this podcast. Uh, and then his second collaborative album uh, with White Fences, Tim Presley. Uh, which is called Joy. Uh, now, Joy is a really terrific record, uh, which features a lot of kind of like late Beatles-era jangly guitars, reverb, 
um, kind of pummeling percussion, pummeling percussion rather. Um, the album sounds like it could have been produced in the late 60s. Now let's have a listen uh, to the third track on this record. Uh, this is also the album's second single. Uh, this is Ty Siegel and White Fence, and the song is called Body Behavior. So that is Body Behavior by Ty Siegel and White Fence off of the pair's collaborative LP Joy, which was released by Drag City in 2018. Now in 2019, Siegel released two very important albums, uh, the phenomenal live LP Deforming Lobes, uh, which captured some highlights from a three night run in LA in 2018. Uh, this record was produced by the famed sound engineer Steve Albini. Uh, known for his work with the Stooges, the Pixies, Nirvana, PJ Harvey, and countless others. Uh, it's an incredible album. Uh, it showcases some of Siegel's deeper cuts, um, but also really puts the Freedom Band front and center. Now, much has been written about the unconventional ways that Albini cut this record. Uh, he eliminated the audience entirely out of the mix uh, and resequenced many of the songs making the album sound more like a kind of live rehearsal than a live performance. But what I love most about this album is how it sounds, how it feels. Over 36 super intense minutes, it punches you in the gut, picks you up, punches you again, and then commands you to just sit and listen. This is primal rock and roll. As a Pitchfork reviewer wrote, you really feel the Freedom Band's imposing presence on the album, particularly on the album's opening track, warm hands. As you'll hear in a second, as the announcer is introducing the band, the opening chord of the song comes violently crashing in like a safe being dropped from a high rise. This is just a brief excerpt of the nearly 10 minute opening bomb track, Warm Hands. Ladies and gentlemen, the... <laughs>
10 minutes like that, and that is the opening track. Uh, that was Warm Hands, uh, recorded live and released on the 2019 album Deforming Lobes. Now, the studio version of that song uh, comes from Siegel's 2017 self-titled album. Now, his second major release in 2019 uh, would be his last solo studio LP, First Taste, uh, or at least the most recent, I should say. Uh, and now, recall how earlier... I described his penchant for experimentation. Uh, his interest in exploring new sounds and approaches to song arrangements, songwriting, and sound design. Uh, his restlessness with writing standard guitar songs. Uh, first Taste, uh, let's see if I can pull it out here, uh, would be the first Ty Siegel album where not a single track features an electric guitar, although there are plenty of other string instruments, uh, mandolins, uh, Greek, bazooki, a Japanese kodo, and more. Uh, if you listen closely, you'll hear dueling dr uh, drummers with Siegel's kit coming out of one channel uh, and Freedom Band drummer Charles Muthert's kit coming out of the other. Now, despite the eclecticism, all the songs still manage to sound kind of quintessentially trippy and very Ty Siegel. It just hangs like every other Ty Siegel record um, really, really well. Uh, this is the album's absolutely smoking opening track. Uh, and it is called Taste. Uh, that is a great opening track. That is Taste off of Ty Siegel's 2019 album, First Taste. Um, and, you know, it is just a, a terrific record overall. Um, yeah, I uh, the most recent studio LP, and I just can't wait for more. Now, it kills me having to end this episode, having played only a few songs from my favorite Ty Siegel albums. Ty Siegel albums. Uh, we've skipped over some important periods uh, in his discography, including some really essential collaborations. Uh, I've been listening a lot lately to the third album by Fuzz, uh, which only came out about a week or so ago. Uh, Fuzz is a power trio uh, featuring Siegel on drums and vocals, uh, freedom band drummer Charles Muthert, who steps up to play guitar, and Chab Ubovich on bass. Uh, Fuzz has released, I think, uh, well, three albums, I think, over the last seven years. Uh, if you like Black Sabbath, that kind of sludgy, detuned, stoner rock, you're really going to love Fuzz. Uh, I also didn't play anything from Siegel's COVID lockdown album, uh, Siegel Smeagol, which came out earlier this year. This is a, a Nielsen Schmielsen cover album, which is absolutely amazing. 
uh, available on digital download. Uh, you can get it from his Bandcamp site. Um, and I did play actually some uh, uh, selections of that album in the uh, second episode uh, that I did on, uh, on cover albums and cover songs. Uh, there's also the albums he's produced or engineered for other artists. I uh, haven't touched them either. Uh, there's the uh, music by the CIA, uh, Shannon Lay, and The OCs. Um, he's been a sound engineer and producer and contributing musician uh, to those and many other albums. And the last thing I want to say um, is that there's nothing more enjoyable than watching a musician who seems to absolutely love what they're doing. Now, watch some of Siegel's shows on YouTube. Uh, this guy just seems to be having a blast, having a ton of fun all the time. Uh, he's working hard, making new music, but you never get the sense that he's just ever going through the motions. Uh, that kind of fun and joy is really infectious and a big part of why I love his music so much. Now, I didn't get into a discussion about 2018's Freedom Goblin, although I mentioned it briefly, and so I'm going to close this episode uh, with my favorite song on that album. Uh, it's called Despoiler of Cadaver. And it is, for me, one of the funkiest tracks, both on that album and one of the funkiest tracks on Siegel's entire discography. And so, uh, this is Despoiler of Cadaver. Uh, that does it for me. Take care of yourselves, enjoy your music, and be good to, your be good to each other. We'll see you again soon.